Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yesterday, electing 23-year-old Safiya Khalid to a seat on the city council. She's the youngest person and the first Somali-American to win a seat there. And she did it in spite of hate from racist online trolls from as far away as Alabama and Mississippi. It's all full of hate and nasty, vile comments and right, Islamophobia attacking my religion, right, my identity from all angles. And it's very hurtful, to be honest with you. And I was hurt. Let's talk about something fun. Yeah. Let's talk about online trolls. Ugh. I know. <laughs> what about the whole bullying online? What are your views on that? I know that you've been the receiving end of it. Mm -hmm. I liked what you said in the Washington Post. You said our community support beat our internet trolls. Yeah. How do we try to slow it down? I don't think we can ever. All those years ago, more than a decade ago, my mom asked, take me into a place. I needed a bigger community that welcomes me for who I am, that takes me in. And then they're like, okay, how about Lewiston, Maine? Way up there. <laughs> they right. suggested that? They yeah. suggested Lewiston. The next day we packed up and we came here and that's exactly what we found. A welcoming community that's full of love. Good. It was just very open-minded and we honestly, we found the opportunities we escaped all those years ago, right? Yeah. To come to, to this new country. You know, when I was knocking all those doors, I got the same message. Like this community was the same community I came to all those years ago. Mm -hmm. That was loving and kind and generous. And when I knocked someone's door, they would be like welcoming me in into their home. And those were the people that actually mattered. Those were the people that would vote for me or would not, or like at least listen to me. Their challenges and the issues that they're dealing with matter to me. Mm -hmm. They're the important Ones. And then when I look at the online, it's completely different. It's all full of hate and mm -hmm. nasty, vile comments and right, Islamophobia attacking my religion, right, my identity from all angles. And it's very hurtful, to be honest with you. And I was hurt if I concentrated on that, if I focused on that, right, they would definitely have derailed me and my message. If I focused on what whoever said from across the country, or even like within the state in another city or town, how would I get up the next day right. and knock more doors? So I definitely turned that social media off and focused on the real people because because you win campaigns. You shut it down. Yeah. Yeah. You win campaigns by knocking doors and canvassing and talking to uh, real people and having real conversations, not responding to trolls online. Yes. Because that's exactly what they what they are, trolls. Yes, they are. Right? And honestly, mm -hmm. I never had someone come up to me and say like those horrible things. Never. I never received a racist message in my face, never a hate message in my face. No one ever. And no one that I know ever received that too. But all the online mm -hmm. is completely different world mm -hmm. and it's really sad that people would say what they're saying in a basement or whatever right. <laughs> in their no, mom's true. house i yeah. just pray for them yeah. that they change their ways and their way of thinking because i will be focusing on what's important and what matters for me yeah and i think the majority of people are accepting and it, welcoming it, it, and yeah, loving are. i think it's just that lower percentage that are so loud mm -hmm. yeah very and they loud. do it so often yeah and that's such a good point yeah. you you campaign by knocking on doors yeah. and you get the truth yeah I right. ask them like what matters to you right. what do you want to see change in the city mm -hmm. right you've lived here for generations what is not working for you right right and they were able to share that with me yeah. and I took that to you know to my heart and I, I believe to them. you and I think girls like us and there's a lot of girls like us we're all like this yeah. we all have this special something inside of us for way too long us girls as women have been told no it's not time yet for way so many it's it. still not time yet <laughs> we as women say sorry mm -hmm. so much oh my god i say that all the time I, like, like i'm drinking water oh my god i'm, I'm so sorry. sorry oh i'm so sorry i'm like, so no, sorry no, no, we need to that. stop apologizing for being us yeah and we have misogyny in our brains yeah. too you know the 1950s housewife or what this ideal look is to be like a woman mm. and so it's in there and we have to deprogram ourselves we're not these women that are just going to yes and and yes, and sorry. listen to what the <laughs> sirs are saying no it's not gonna work for me it's not gonna work for her it's not gonna work for you guys either this has been amazing I'm so glad to have met you <gasps> oh my god well, guys, this, is this is what we're doing because the lights went off.
everybody goes through so much adversity in different ways. We're all survivors. Why can't we be survivors together? Why do we have to be survivors disconnected and separate from each other? There should be no racial divide. There should be no discrimination in the year 2020 in the great state of Maine. And we're not gonna stop talking about this issue until it's gone. So hi, my name's Lizzie. Get used to me because I'm here and I want us all to love each other. And that's it for today, you guys. Bubbies, I'll see you on the next go around of this beautiful, beautiful life. life. Bye, bubbies.